Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another record to play for you. Today's record is Alien Creatures from 1970, from 1975. So let's get started. It's a bright midsummer day in Metropolis, and there's not much news fit to televise at Galaxy Communications, where in his office, Clark Kent is monitoring the 12 o'clock news sunny at 12 noon in downtown metropolis it's 92 degrees and getting hotter lois lane ace reporter for galaxy communications opens clark's door and looks in clark i'm off for lunch enjoy it lois i think i'm going to take a nap lois lane leaves and clark lies back in his chair only to be rudely awakened by galaxy clark kent here dr tripper speaking of the <coughs> void observatory Yes, Dr. Tripper. What can I do for you? <clears throat> well, it seems, Mr. Kent, my telescope is picking up a strange sort of, well, what I can only describe as an electrical storm, which is <coughs> which is approaching the Earth rapidly. I, uh, well, I thought the news media should be advised. Clark immediately sends for Jimmy Olson, investigative reporter for the Daily Planet. Listen, Jimmy, take a ride out to Void Observatory and check out what's happening and let me know immediately. I'll be here. Meanwhile, Perry White, editor of the Daily Planet, is hosting a luncheon in honor of Superman, which is being held on the 20th floor of the 50-floor Majestic Hotel. But Superman has not yet appeared to take his place of honor. As Jimmy disappears out the door, Clark Kent steps into the closet in his office. I thought nothing would ever come up to get Lois and Jimmy out of here so I could get to that lunch on time. And as Clark Kent, now Superman, whizzes out his office window to attend the lunch in his honor, Jimmy Olsen drives rapidly along a winding mountain road on his way to Void Observatory, site of the most powerful telescope in the world. Wouldn't you know, I have to be the one to drive all the way out here in this heat. Oof! It must be 100 degrees in the shade and no rain in sight. Jimmy's car pulls up to Void Observatory. He walks up to the lab and... As Jimmy waits for the door of the Void Observatory to open, he happens to glance up at the sky, where he notices a small dark cloud way, way up, far above the highest mountaintop. Looks like storm clouds are gathering. The immense door finally opens, and Dr. Tripper beckons Jimmy inside. You must be from, from, from the news media. <laughs> now, your credentials, please. Investigative reporter, Galaxy Communications. Well, come in then, come in, come on. Jimmy steps inside the room and is immediately taken aback by the sight of the gigantic telescope which occupies the whole observatory. <gasps> wow, Doctor, that thing's a monster. You ought to be able to see a storm coming up a million miles away. Mm, yes, we can, we can, and there is a storm coming up but I've never sighted anything like this one before. Here, <coughs> here, uh, let me explain this. Meanwhile, back in Metropolis, Lois Lane sits at the counter of the Green All Drug Store where she's finishing her lunch. A pineapple ice cream soda. And at the Majestic. And so, Superman, although absolutely nothing has happened to disturb the citizens of Metropolis for some time now, and no one has needed your services, we want you to know we greatly appreciate all that you've done for us in the past. As Perry presents Superman with a plaque from the Daily Planet, one of the guests looks out the window. Hey, what's that? What's going on here? It's Haley. It's Haley's silver bullet. As the luncheon guests mill around the room, holes appear in the ceiling. And silver bullets streak through the room to the floor below. Panic. Help! Superman! Don't help! Help! Now, I'd better go pick up Lois at Galaxy and get out to Void Observatory fast. At the same time, caught outside in the street on her way back to work, Lois Lane dodges silver bullets. She runs toward the empty Galaxy offices and rushes into Clark Kent's office. Clark? Where she finds only a television set going. Reports from Moscow indicate a catastrophe has occurred. Since 6 o'clock this morning, we haven't heard a word. SOS, SOS. Alien creatures are landing. Alien creatures are landing. Lois stands, paralyzed, before the television set. Superman zooms through the window and comes to a screeching halt beside her. Lois! Superman! What is it? What's happening? 
I don't know, Lois, but I have a hunch that Void Observatory is the place to find out. Let's go. But Superman, where's Clark? I left him right here at his desk. We'll have to look for Clark later. No time now. And Superman and Lois are on their way to the observatory, where... So you see, Jimmy, we have been in constant radio communication with particles of what seemed to be an electrical storm. But we have had no way of interpreting the signals we've been receiving. Now, our next step... Wait a minute, Dr. Tripper. Look, it's raining silver bullets. <laughs> oh, what's going on? They seem to be evaporating everything in their path. Oh, good grief. I'm sure that... Well, I, I mean, I, 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 I hope they're friendly. Superman and Lois Lane appear through the open roof of the observatory and drop to the floor beside Jimmy and Dr. Tripper. Superman, Superman, thank goodness you've come. Uh, but what are we going to do? I'm sure these alien creatures are friendly, but they're unwittingly destroying us, and we have no way of communicating with them. Superman, you've got to do something. If we can't talk to them, then we must communicate without words. ESP, thought transference, it's the only way. Everyone, concentrate. With all the superhuman power at his disposal, Superman sets his great mind in gear to send out a message to these alien creatures who, in landing on the planet Earth, can only, albeit unintentionally, destroy it. Haltingly, Superman speaks. They say they've had to leave their planet Zoink. because it has become uninhabitable. They say that the planet Earth is a good place for them. Once again, Superman focuses his mind power on the incredible problem of communicating with creatures who speak no language known to man. Help me, everyone. Help me to explain. And the birds, the trees, the Earth people, the fish, the flowers cry out. To each its all, to all its space. Give the world back to the world. Please, friends, give the world back to the world. Alien creatures, you will destroy our life on the planet Earth if you land. Alien creatures, you are destroying us. Silence. They've stopped falling. Look, they're hovering just off the ground. They don't look like silver bullets. They're like beautiful silver hummingbirds. Oh, Superman, where will they go if they can't stay here? Yes, Lois, that's what they're saying, too. His incredible vision, already a trillion times sharper than that of any ordinary being, Superman steps up beside the giant void telescope. And with no need of the aid of the most powerful telescope known to man, Superman gazes farther out into the universe than any human has ever dared or even tried to see. Yes. Aha. There it is. A planet in the exact same orbital relationship to its sun as Zoink and the Earth are to their suns. But in an entirely different solar system, of course, from ours and theirs. Our radio waves have confused these little creatures and thrown them off their course. Once again, Superman concentrates. Like a laser, his mind beams the exact course they must take to the silver creatures who wait shivering just a foot above the Earth's surface. Then, like a plague of locusts, the alien creatures rise up, up into the sky, up until they become once again a tiny, tiny dark cloud above the highest mountaintop, and then, finally, can be seen no more. You did it, Superman. You saved us. And you saved them, too. Once again, we have you to thank, Superman, for saving the world from total destruction. Oh, my goodness. Clark, we've got to get back to Metropolis and find him. All right, Lois. You drive back with Jimmy. I'll scout around and see if I can catch sight of him. Back at Galaxy Communications a few hours later. Clark, thank goodness you're all right. I was so worried. Where have you been? Well, actually, Lois, I was under the desk when you and Superman were here, but I was too terrified of getting hit by a silver bullet to come out and let you know I was here. What happened? I sure wish it would rain.
So that was Superman, Alien Creatures from 1975. So please like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We have another video coming out real soon.